I am Tatiana Kudluk, I am data scientist at HVA Tech Company. And despite all the fact that the main uh, areas of my work are machine learning, recommendation system, etc., for some reason I often speak about natural language processing. Why? Because it's my favorite area in data science. And today we will not go away and we will speak about text generation and what can happen when artificial intelligence falls into women's hands. Let's go. The agenda for today is next. First of all, we will speak about business problem and why text generation. Then we dive deep into deep learning. And at the end, I will show you my experience of text generation by using Python. So why text generation? First of all, it's a hot topic today. And secondary, one year ago, when I had the speech right here on PyCon 2016, I was asked by the question, okay, you can do word embeddings, you can understand prepared text, it's pretty well, but would you be able to generate your own text? I asked that you know some guys do it pretty well and they used neural network for that, blah, 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 but I didn't do it before, so please go and um, search on the internet. But one year passed and I fixed this gap in my life and I already would like to tell you about that. And also I would like to say thank you for that guy who proposed me the great idea for research. Yeah, and special thank you is for my husband who has been a lot of days without dinner while I generated text. What is tech generation? It's ability of computer program to create new natural text by using some learned samples. It's all. And you know that we can generate not only text, we can generate some pictures, like images. Um, very popular test today is using some paintings, like Picasso paintings, in order to stylize your photo. We also can generate some video. I would like to tell you about one interesting experiment in Japan, when one company created computer program in order to generate advertising video of mental candies. And uh, this program was trained on high-rated videos. And the same task was given to the creative director of this company with a big experience in this sphere. Then two videos were sent for evaluation for free audience. And what do you think? Which one was the winner? Yeah, it was the video of computer program. Also, we can generate speech. Also, we can generate music. Also, we can generate some moments. One more experiment was happened in Great Britain when uh, the group of students uh, danced on Robbie Williams music. And a computer program detected all their movements and was trained on uh, high-rated movements. And computer program generated something like idol dance and you can watch it right now. So learn, enjoy and learn in order to be the best guy on today's after party. Yeah, and regarding all this information, uh, European Parliament uh, is going to create a bill in order to define the rights of robot. Really, who knows what else robot can generate in future. Yeah, and returning to text generation, you can say, okay, I can try to do it, but where I should go with it, uh, in which projects, for example. So, the first one is chatbot creating. By training the model, you can generate new questions and also new answers. Also, you can generate some new names, like people names or company names, etc. You can generate product descriptions in e-commerce projects. You can generate some journal journalistic text like um, news articles or even speeches. Uh, you can generate fun functional text like um, official letters inside of your company. And you know I made the computer program which is able to generate even business problems. The next question, what should we use in order to generate text? Of course, today you will have the best result when you use neural networks. And Joshua um, told you about some practice side of neural networks, and I would like uh, to tell you about the mass theory. So maybe it's, um, it's uh, not a very nice question, but I would like to uh, ask you, who knows how neural network works? 
Okay, not all. And who uses neural networks for your job? Okay, I'm more or less the same. Uh, so for all people who don't know how they work, I will start from the basic idea very quickly. And for all the others who don't want to hear about the same thing again and again, I will show the opposite of the idle dance, the moments which you, sh you shouldn't use anyway. So, uh, artificial neural network works like biological neural network. We have the neuron which takes the information from the outside like inputs multiplied on their weights. In this case, the cell can take to account some inputs more than the other. And then we have like the sum of these inputs, like the linear function. But you know that no, ot, not all data can be represented as linear function. So we have add some unlinearity here. And we can do it by using some activation functions, mass functions like rectifier, sigmoid, or uh, hyperbolic tangents, etc. By processing the data by using these functions, uh, neurons send the information to the next layer. When we put some uh, neurons one after another and join them into layers, we will have neural network, uh, which consists of input layer, which takes the information from the outside, and also output layer, which um, calculate the probabilities of each class, for example, when we have uh, softmax here. And also hidden layers, we can have more than one where we add some unlinearity to our data. Let's look at the example when we have, for example, um, some text samples like um, interviews of our politicians. And we would like to classify them into truth or not. And we have some labels for them. And we move them to neural network and tell it, please put the correct weights on each of your neuron in order to make the good prediction, truth it or not. And then we can use our neural network to predict truth or not for a new interview of new politician. Yes, you can say that we can one more problem here. It's unbalanced data set because it's really hard to find a lot of truth interviews of other politicians. Yeah? Um, you know that there are different architectures of neural network. And depending on there, you can get very nice, very, very different result. And uh, uh, it's very boring test to decide which one you should use because there are no exact recipes for that. And when I didn't know about all this stuff, I lived like a usual woman, like Ukrainian girl, and I slept very well. And for a uh, text classification, I used some word embedding methods like word to back, fast text, and then I applied some classical machine learning models. But now, I sleep very bad because I should think about all the stuff, which one I should select, RNN or LSTM, and which dropout, which batch size, etc. So I decided to tell you some recipes in order you avoid the problems with sleeping. So when you have the deal with text, you can start using recurrent neural networks. They can uh, show you the best performance. So what is this and why are they so special? Uh, they have a very small secret. It's ability to remember, to, rem to connect some items through time. For example, the information which I tell you right now is connected with the information which I said to you before. And I hope, I believe that besides that two guys who are still sleeping, all the others remember what is going right now. And it's pretty cool for recurrent neural network because it is it can do it, it can remember all stuff before. And it does it because it can operate over sequences of vectors, not over some uh, similar objects. Of course, we can represent our text 
a sequence of some characters of or words and move this sequence to our module and uh, allow it to process these sequences. When we look at the structure of RNN, it's very simple, like simple neural network. And where is the secret? The secret is in this sign under the neuron, recurrency sign. And when we unroll our neuron, we will see that it consists of n the same cells. And um, when we are speaking about text generation, what we do? We move some unstructured text in our RNN and tell it, please predict each new, new word, each next word, or each next character by using the previous, by using the sequences of previous words. And when we move the first word, it tries to predict the second. When we move the second word, it tries to predict the third, but it remember the first one, okay? But uh, theoretically, it sounds pretty good, but in practice, you can face some problems. And, the and this problem is that RNN starts to forget some words after, for example, 15s or 20s. And when you have very simple text data set and small sentences like today's PyCon is great and we would like to predict the word great, it will, it will be able to remember today's and PyCon. But when you have a very long sentence like today's PyCon after the great uh, talk of Joshua, for example, and uh, tasty coffee at the restaurant was great, it can forget the previous words. So how to solve this problem? In order to solve this problem, we can use the special type of RNN. It's long short-term memory architecture. And it is able to solve this problem and to remember all previous words. Why? The structure of neuron is the same, correct? But the magic is inside of the neuron. When we had one activation function for RNN neurons, we have here more functions. And they are joined into three main gates, input, forget, and output. Input gate decides how much information you should get from the previous layer. And forget gate decides how much information you should forget from the previous state of this current neuron. And output gate decides how much information you should send to the next layer. And it allows to remember all words and forget unuseful words for our task. And um, because of it, LSTMs uh, need more resources and more time to train. So how to solve this problem? We can solve this problem. Yeah, it's a function that for these three gates. We can solve this problem by using special type of RNN, which is simpler variant of LSTM. It's GRU. Um, GRU consists only from uh, two gates. The first one decides how, how much information to get from the previous layer and how much information to uh, leave here and reset gate decides how much information to forget. So we don't have output, uh, output gate here and we will send the whole information to the next layer. Very simple. But because of it, GRU is faster and GRU can outperform the LSTM on all tasks besides language uh, modeling. And even when you have small text data set, it also outperform LSTM. So you can use LSTMs only when you have big data set. It isn't still the end because we have one more, uh, one more type of uh, RNNs and LSTMs. It's BRNN, LSTM, BLSTM and BGRU. They work in the same way but they can use not only previous words or characters for prediction, 
but also the next part for prediction. So they join future and past in order to fill gaps in the middle of in text or inside of pictures, for example. The next, next very simple, very, very interesting architecture. It's sequence to sequence. Here we join two models, encoder and decoder. Um, let's imagine the situation when we have questions and answers, and we would like to create chatbot. So we move our questions to encoder and tell it, please create some context vectors from these questions and select only important words from them. Uh, like do a summarization of my questions. And then we send these context vectors to our decoder, which can see the correct answers and tell decoders, please understand these context vectors and try to make the same prediction as the answer. Try to maximize the log probability of the output sentence of answer. Um, they are commonly used for chatbots creating. And finally, the last model. Who fell asleep? Nobody? Oh, nice. Uh, the, last, uh, the last type of uh, uh, neural network is generative adversarial network. Here we have also two models, but they are called generator and discriminator. And using these models can help us to uh, validate or to evaluate our generated text. Because you can control your loss, your validation and training loss, but you can't control the quality of your generated text. And you can add new model in order to generate the quality of your generated text. For example, uh, we move some text to generator and it um, try to balance weights and generate new text. And then it sends this, this generated text to discriminator. And discriminator also can see the correct, the natural text and try to find the difference between generated text and uh, real text. It's like a judge for our first model. And the output from discriminator will be real or fake. Though the main task of generator here will be to be less predictable for discriminator. And the main task of discriminator will be to understand the difference between real and generated. They like play the game against each other. Yeah, you can train the model, but how can you know that it is good or not? You can know it but, uh, by controlling your training and validation loss in order to avoid overfeeding when your model makes very nice prediction on train set and bad on validation set, and of course to avoid underfitting. Um, very important part in um, different models training is hyperparameter tuning. You know that depending on different sets of hyperparameters, we will have very different predictions and of course very different results for generated text. So you can control layers number or RNN size depending on the size of your data set. You can put different activation functions. Uh, very interesting hyperparameter is dropout, which allows you to avoid overfitting because you hide some data from each neuron like drop some inputs and uh, your neuron can't learn training set very well, but it allows to have good prediction on your test set. Batch size is the number of training samples which you uh, train in parallel way and it can economize your spending for time, etc. but when it will be very, very high, you can end up with uh, very rough gradient descent. Sequence, sequences length is the number of words or characters which you uh, 
will use for predictions the next word or character. Uh, temperature, also interesting hyperparameter because uh, um, it, it, it's the prediction is depending on uh, the value of temperature. For example, when you put the lowest temperature, uh, the prediction will be more likely or sometimes boring, but when you put very high temperature, you can get very unusual generated text, but it will have some mistakes. So you can play with this parameter. Learning rate and momentum, you can set up for your um, gradient descent, and uh, um, you can select them, them randomly or by hands, but also, you can use some optimizer and it is recommended for uh, such type of models training. Next, disadvantages of uh, RNNs for generation text. First of all, overfitting. But you now have to do it, to have to avoid this problem by using dropout, increasing dropout, and when it doesn't help, you can you should increase your data set. The second, um, neural networks don't work on small data set. You should have at least one million samples in order to train good model. Duration of training, of course, if you are happy and you have GPU, you can train your model very fast. But when you are not happy like me and you use CPU, it can take a lot of ta time. So thank you gamers that we can use GPUs. And I know that there are some guys who don't want to generate text. And for you, I can say that we can use RNNs not only for text generation. We can use them for music generation or handwriting, for sentiment analysis, for images description. You can um, do language translation by using LSTMs or other types. You can uh, you also do entities recognition, and Metro will speak about this in a few minutes, if I will be able to stop and um, speech recognition and new designer solution creation like new clothing style or new shoes style or furniture style, etc. Okay, and I can tell you about some theory hours and hours, but you know that actually I use Python for this text solution. And there are a lot of different libraries we can use any of them, and most of them are working with GPU, and um, uh, at Joshua I used Keras, I also like Keras very much. And now, finally, it's time for a fun with Python. And um, I decided to generate some interesting things. And as you know, what can come into women's head, it's to make the life of women more interesting by generating some recipes, for example. So I downloaded uh, some thousand recipes and tried to uh, train the LSTM model character to character on Keras. It took me 11 days because I use CPU and by using such hyper parameters. I, it is not the first model, it is the last model. I used um, some before and um, they filed it with overfitting. Yeah, and the whole process looks like that. We read the text, we transform them. If we use characters, we can tr transform by using one hot uh, encoding. And then we can try a LSTM model and then we can put some seed text and say model, Pre please continue my text by prediction each next character, one by one. And now you can see the result. By using seed categories main dish, I have got this recipe, like main dish. So some products looks very good, like onion, garlic, cilantro, etc. But um, the main product is green chicken. So when I find where I can b buy green chicken, I promise that I would be able to cook this dish. 
yeah. But I know that there are a lot of guys who are not interested in cooking. So for you guys, I decided to generate drink. It's alcohol drink. And um, you know that I, uh, I, I decided to train the model only on drinks, but uh, uh, it was very small data set, about 3,000 drinks. And uh, there are big data sets on the internet, but uh, they cost about $300. And then my husband calculated how much drinks we can buy for this money. And we decided to stay on this. So alcohol drink, you can try it to do it. And for example, you can use eggs and bourbon whiskey. And it's a real recipe because um, eggs are used for alcohol drinks, of course. And not fresh lemon, but remaining lemon. It's very important things. Okay, the next. You know that there are a lot of articles where they write that robots can replace programmers in future. I decided to check it and try the model on the Python scripts. I downloaded some uh, famous, um, some scripts from the famous libraries like NumPy, Pandas, etc., and trained the model on GPUs. Uh, time and it took me less time, of course, and you can see the results. So when we move the output to the IPython notebook, we will have very nice structure. And when we define some variables, we can end up even without some mistakes. But sometimes we have very dummy results like uh, import unknown functions, etc. Here is bigger piece of code. So it doesn't make sense, but it looks pretty uh, structured code, yeah? You can try to improve the quality, and in order to improve it, you can increase your data set, you can tune hyperparameters. Of course, for this, you should use GPU. Also, we can train the not character to character model, but you could train also word um, to word RNN, and uh, here you should use word, emb word embeddings for text transformation, and Metro also will speak about this. Yeah, but you know that ideas without execution are only hallucinations. Yeah, when there are guys who would like to stay and go home and use LSTMs for, for some task, you can do it. Uh, and I recommend to go to the Kaggle. It is very nice, very uh, interesting competition, video description, and you can use some types of RNNs and try to solve the problem. Maybe you will appear among the winners of this competition. And when there are still guys who don't want to generate text and use RNNs and go to the Kaggle, I have one more case for you guys where neural network can be very useful. It's economizing on heating. The recipe is to buy some Titan X and run very, very deep neural network on big data set. And in this case, you can switch off your heating and enjoy the high temperature at your apartment. Yeah. And Naturally, I would like to speak about the plans for the next year. So my plan is to generate my next speech, and who knows, maybe next year I will spend less time for preparing for this talk, and um, I will talk about hot topics by using generated text. And here I added some um, useful links for you. Uh, you can uh, go and read in details about some um, about some uh, uh, models and uh, also you can go and download some implementations of, um, uh, of neural networks and RNNs for text generation and it can be a very funny uh, task. And also I add uh, uh, the link to our um, product Science Pulse uh, which is able to extract some hot topics each month. I, if you would like to know about hot topics in computer science, you can read there about this. Yeah, and maybe it's all from my side. Thank you very much, and I will be happy to hear some questions from your side. Uh, 
on that slide about uh, adversarial networks, uh, what type of network were you using for discriminator? Was that also LSTM or something else? Yeah, um, we can use also LSTM, like LSTM and LSTM, and also we can use G, GRU to GRU networks. And I um, uh, have read one very interesting uh, um, article where they try different models, simple RNNs and LSTMs, and GRU, and GRU uh, gave them but the best performance for their task. So uh, they tried to um, write the summarization of some text, text and they have labeled the data set, so they have some uh, messages and their summarization, and GRU outperformed all the other uh, types of neural network in that uh, situation. So I recommend to start from them because they need uh, less resources than other. Thanks for the report. Why did you use the character to character prediction uh, purely for resources optimization or it has some other advantages to word to word prediction? Okay, so um, it's because resources, uh, of course. Uh, um, when we use CPU, it doesn't matter to use word embeddings because the vectors can be really huge and it's difficult to train the model. But I, I think that uh, uh, we can get better results by using word to word, and uh, I recommend to use it. No more questions? Thank you. Thank you.